scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the power of his word. I believe in transformation. I believe that territories can come under the influence of the government of heaven. I also believe in miracles. I believe God can change lives. And tonight, as we begin a series of teachings, I want to encourage you in addition to the marvelous work that has been done. By the way, let's give honor to all the vessels that God has used before this time. Truly honor you, sirs. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible declares that he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. I, I have been so honored and touched just knowing the sacrifices that many of you have made. Many of you have traveled from far, traveled from there. I can tell you one thing about God. There is a name that he is called, a rewarder. A rewarder. He rewards. He rewards. Hallelujah. And so may I encourage you before you sit to number one, please pay attention to the teachings because the power of God is derived from his word. Anointing has no ministry. The assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word of God becomes true in your life. And so if there is no declaration of that which has been spoken, the anointing has no ministry. God only does what he says. He does not just do what you want. He does not just do what is needed. The only way you can get God to do a thing is also to make him say it. Genesis 21 verse 1. Please keep standing. Please keep standing. Genesis, will we have it projected? Please read with me if you are a Christian when you have it projected. Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1. Please just help those under the anointing. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. The only reason why he visited her was not because she was in need. It was because he said it. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. The only way God performs is when he says. Hallelujah. And I want you to also be very sensitive because you see, Graces have their effects when they are allowed to find expression. And, and I don't mean to sound arrogant, sincerely forgive me if I do. But I can tell you one thing for sure, that whilst you are seated listening, 
it is not only the sound of the word you will be hearing you will also be hearing sounds of the abundance of rain <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now I don't know why the Holy Spirit is moving me this way but I'm seeing the number seven before we sit listen the number seven please help them the power of God is coming on them right now as I speak seven for you will never be the same when the presence of Jesus just be patient we'll sit down this is why you came you came for a conference what is that mountain that stands before you in the name of Jesus for there is a name that has been exalted above every other name and in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I decree and declare that everything that does not name the name of Christ it bows to the Lordship of Jesus tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to sit down. But I'm hearing in my spirit restoration. This is... There are people who have lost things through the pandemic. Some of you came here. They are taken for a prey and none say it restore. It takes a voice to declare restoration. Hallelujah. And I'm seeing the number 21. We may not be able to bring people out here, but I stretch my hands. The power of God is coming. I'm seeing the number 21. You will be amazed at what happens to you tonight. May the grace that brings that which has left you. May that grace come upon you now. Take that grace. Help them please. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus. The son of the living God. Let the, Help them please. Restoration of everything that has been lost. I speak to a man of God here. It looks like the mantle and the grace of God upon your life. You are seeing things go down in life and in ministry. I lend my voice with the man of God and I speak to you. There Hallelujah. Please sit down if you can. We have to walk with time. In every spirit that is not of the Christ in this place. To liberty right now. In Jesus name. You see the Bible says wherefore God had so highly exalted him. South Africa hear me. Jesus is alive. And for many of you Jesus is still alive. Amen. Amen. Did we greet? Good evening, everybody. So let's get to the word. Again, it's my joy to be here. I, I believe that the Lord sent me here. Thank God for the blessings of relationship. And um, this is not a meeting just for House of Treasures. This is an apostolic and a prophetic conference that is for South Africa, is for Africa, for the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. What we're discussing, the topic, I would like to just 
brief us, if you will, just to help us understand how God is going to be leading us through our discourse. Um, my assignment is to challenge the body of Christ across this territory and to help them to lend my voice and in faith with all the servants of God within this territory so that we are able to experience greater levels of the move of God even within this territory in the name of Jesus. And so tonight we will be examining the current state of the church, the body of Christ. It's, it's a spiritual x-ray. We are going to be looking at the body of Christ uh, from a standpoint of love and a passion to, to see how we can rise to higher spiritual dimensions. If you're with me, say amen. amen. And then we will also be examining in subsequent sessions, I will be teaching, are we together? Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and he says, you will be witnesses unto me. And he gives you geography. Your witness has geography. Our witness is not random. He tells us we are witnesses. And he begins to list the geographic component of our witness. Ultimately, to the ends of the earth. But to Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, to the uttermost part of the earth. And I hope that you will have the time to discuss a bit on the work of the ministry. This is particularly for men and women of God, those who are called into ministry, that God will grant us grace to sharpen one another here and there, just put dots on the I's and cross the T's and to help bring ourselves to higher levels of accuracy and precision as far as the work of the kingdom is concerned. And of course, in a meeting like this, God will never leave himself without a witness. Therefore, expect outpourings of the Spirit, marvelous healings and miracles like he has begun. Expect such a move of the Spirit in this conference. If you believe everything we're going to be doing, please talk to the Lord in one minute. My heart is open. Send your word. Send your word. Send your word. Hallelujah. Amen. For tonight, can these bones leave? That's my teaching for tonight. Ezekiel 37, please. Can these bones leave? We're examining the mystery behind degeneration, the mystery behind decadence, and the mystery behind restoration. What does it take for a man to go down? And what does it take for a man to to be restored the bible says the things that are written aforetime that they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope that means that scattered in this bible are the truths the principles of the kingdom that help us to learn god help us to know god we understand his character we understand his ways when we examine scripture are we together so Ezekiel chapter 37, this was an encounter that prophet Ezekiel had. This is um, a prophetic picture, if you would want to look at it. That it, was, it was a picture of the current state of the nation of Israel that is also applicable. Remember, we're doing a spiritual anatomy. We want to examine the body of Christ as it is now. What is worth commenting? What is worth addressing? Because until we can look at ourselves in light of what God intends to do, we might not be able to find our way out. When you find a man who is lost, 
and he's trying to look for the direction, the first thing you ask him is, where are you? He has to be able to identify where he or she is. Then you can direct them from that point. You're on your way to house of treasures and now you've missed your way. We cannot help you until we find a way of making you aware of where you are. Is that true? So Ezekiel 37, let's hurry up for time. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about and behold, they were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And the prophet said, I am used to seeing things change in the realm of the spirit, but this is a difficult situation. And even as a prophet, I confess, only thou knowest. So now the Bible begins by describing a state. Every bone here was once a human based on that vision. The question is not what happened later on. Forget about that, we're coming there. The real question is what happened that the humans now deteriorated to the point where they became bones. Because if you do not understand why this degeneration happened, any miracle will only be a waste. You have to first correct what happened that necessitated that miracle. Are we learning now? So, he is taken to a valley that is full of dry bones. And bones in scripture, among other things, talk of structure. Structure. When Joseph left a prophecy, he said, make sure my bones are taken. When you are leaving Egypt, take my bones with you. He did not just mean the physical bones. Take the spiritual structure that gave you favor in a harsh land. Don't lose it. There is a formula that I gave you that made you to prevail even in Egypt. When you are leaving, take that structure with you. The structure of the presence of God. The structure of reverence for the things of God. So the first thing that we see here that God was addressing was not life. It was the bones. Let's do something about the bones. The army is a product of the bones. Until the bones came together, there was no need for life. There was no need for flesh. Are we together? Now the truth is that the Bible is full of instances where God would send warnings to his people, attempting to call them back to their first love, attempting to plant in them their long lost passion. All through scripture, especially when we read through the life of the nation of Israel, they were God's covenant people, they were his beloved people. But once and again, you would find out that for some reason, there would be a way, a system of spiritual halotry. They would deviate from the known patterns of God. And when that happened, usually from scripture, they are handed over to their enemies. Is that true? And then when that happens, God would send a prophet and he would call them and most times they would heed to his warning and he would bring them salvation and bring them restoration. So the idea of deviating from the patterns of God, the idea of deviating from God's authorized system, his modus operandi, is not something that is new. It's happened from scripture, it's happened through scripture, through, through history, that a people can be on fire today and for some reason lose it. Our history is full of revivals, the moves of God. You would read, I believe that South Africa has its share of that history. Men and women of God who arose from your soil doing mighty things for God. Many of them have gone to be with the Lord. When you read through Bible, when you read through history across Africa, Europe, US, you would find out that at a particular time in history, there seemed to have been 
been certain men and women who came from maybe backgrounds that were not really something to write home about, but God used them to do marvelous things. Some finished well, some did not finish well. Both are lessons for us. Are we together? Today we live in very troubling times. In Africa and across the globe, the church is going through a very prophetic season of transition. There is a lot that is going and, and every nation um, without exception has, has its share of issues as far as the body of Christ is concerned. I believe it's been the same thing in this region too. That there's been all kinds of shifts, all kinds of things. And this is very important. Jesus himself built his church. And he had so many things to say about the church. Two things Jesus said about the church that is very instructive. Number one, in Matthew chapter 5, we begin our reading from verse 13. Jesus himself is teaching in what we know theologically to be the Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5, we begin our reading from verse 13. Jesus is teaching now. And he tells them, you are the salt of the earth. Everybody say salt of the earth. Salt of the earth means that you give, you add value and you preserve. That's the assignment of salt. It adds taste and it preserves. That means the decadence in the world is a report card that the church might be failing somewhere. Because the Bible tells us that we are salt. Is that true? You are the salt of the earth. But it says, if the salt has lost its savour, wherein shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man. Next verse. We're reading to 16. Verse 14, please. It says, ye are the light of the world. That means the definition of darkness is not when power is out. It is the world without the church. God's definition of darkness is not the absence of electricity. It's the world without the church. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. And then it says, neither do men light a lamp. The next verse. A candle and put it under a bushel, but upon a candlestick. And it giveth light to all who are in the house. And then he says, let your light so shine. The word let is the word permit. Permit your light to so shine, not in heaven, before men. He wants them to see your good works and so glorify your father in heaven. So Jesus tells us as a church, please pay attention, that we are light. He says, we are salt. When you read Matthew chapter 16, maybe just write it for reference, Matthew 16 from verse 13 down to 19. Matthew 16, 13 down to 19. Jesus began a discussion about his identity. That would be where he would talk eventually about the concept of church. Look at how the idea of church started. It started with an identity crisis. The people did not know him. And he says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? It was a very good question. Because he, he wondered at the confusion, the people who were close to him. They said, well, we do not know. Some say you are John the Baptist, you are Elijah incarnate, you are one of the prophets, Jeremiah. And he said, okay, who do you say that I, the son of man, is or am? And he was surprised that none of them, even though they were close to him, they really did not know who he was. So proximity does not mean revelation. Just because you are close to scripture, just because you are carrying a Bible, just because you are around Christian activities does not necessarily mean you have an encounter. Peter alone spoke by the Spirit. He said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And then he says this. He says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Then he says, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, what rock? Upon this understanding. I will construct my church based on this understanding. That nothing will be able to work in your life until you first have a revelation of it. This is the formula 
that I will build my church upon. That means you don't just tell people be free until you have a revelation of the grace supports the revelation. So he says, I will build my church this way. And if you allow my church to function this way, it will be so formidable. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So if the gates of hell seem to be prevailing effortlessly over the church, we must go back and examine our spiritual architecture. There is something we have lost. Now, re re remember that a conference like this is not about pointing fingers. A conference like this is about a corporate examination. Are we together now? I have to say that. It is true that the state of any territory is largely a reflection of the kind and the quality of believers within that territory. Please take note. The state of any territory, any nation, any region is largely a reflection of the kind and the quality of believers within that territory. This is very true. Every time a nation was in decadence, every time a territory was in decadence, God's first port of call was the believers or his covenant people. God addressed the nation by addressing the church. You have to pay attention to this. This is very important. Every time a territory or a nation begins to plunge through some sort of decadence, when God comes to solve the problem, truly speaking, he does not go to government, he does not go to royalties, he comes straight to the church and says, what is going on? Church, I kept you here and mandated you with an assignment. Are we together now? This is very important. All across Africa, like I said, and all across Europe, the US, we know that things are happening economically, things are happening politically like we've never seen before. And I can tell you this, the church has a role to play. The church needs to give the world an explanation. As to why we have allowed darkness to move as though the reality of the finished work of Jesus were a lie. Are we together now? So, Ezekiel is caught up in the spirit and he's shown a vision. And it's a vision of a once great army that had now become bones. And the interesting thing is that the bones were so disjointed. You would look at the valley and almost not see the bones, but all of them were there. What scattered them so much? Because under a certain condition, those bones can come again. So every bone that was scattered was still there. Out of sight, but not beyond reach there was a condition that was initiated and the Bible says the bones began to come again and at the end of it, here was an exceeding great army standing. For tonight, I want to, I want us to walk together as the body of Christ over South Africa and over Africa generally and then across the world Let's work together as I identify three major factors. Please write this down. Three major factors that I believe have affected the quality of believers. The quality of the spiritual products that have come out of our churches, out of our assemblies, out of our spiritual platforms. And remember... I teach as one who is a son of the soil. I am an African myself. And so I teach from a standpoint of love. I teach as one who is a co-laborer. Are we together now? I have only come to strengthen the hand of the body of Christ that together we rise to the next level that God has destined for us. But we must pay attention and we must be honest. Listen to me. What you are about to learn tonight for many of you is a confirmation of what the Spirit has been showing you. For many of you, it may be a correction of your approach to life and ministry and even spirituality. 
But for all of us together, there are things to learn so that our children and our children's children will be able to preserve the power, the grace, and the potency of the name of the Lord. Are we still together? So let's continue. Three factors that have affected our territories haven't agreed that the quality, the quality of the believers within a territory defines in large proportion the quality of that territory. Economically speaking, politically speaking, etc. Number one. What is the first problem? What is the first issue? What is the first factor that has affected the quality of believers in today's church? Number one, the first real factor is that most believers or most people, most church people, if I would use that expression, they have no genuine encounter with God. Now, I'm this this i i let me apologize in advance don't feel bad when these things you just accept it as god trying to help you because those he loves he chastises are we together now the absence of genuine encounter with god from the pulpit to the pew is a major problem for as long as we do not have a genuine encounter with God, the products that come out of that aberrated Christian experience cannot be potent enough to host God within a territory. Please pay attention. The plane is only preparing to lift. No genuine encounters with God. You see, the spiritual protocol, look up please. The spiritual protocol is every time God calls you, he does not send you. Your first assignment is not to go and work for him. Every time he calls you, the formula is follow me. I am your object, not ministry, not business, not church. When God calls you, he says follow me. When he makes you, then he sends you. Just because you are called does not mean you are sent. Please sit down. Pay attention. Come. Follow me. Follow me. Your calling is not to a pulpit. Your calling is not to a marketplace. Believe me. Your calling is not to politics. Your calling is to Jesus. What you call pulpit, marketplace, politics is just the geography of your weakness. After you have effectively fulfilled your calling. The absence of a genuine encounter with Jesus is what has produced the plethora of issues that we have first from the pulpit and then across membership and then by extension to society. When God called Moses, when you read Exodus chapter 3, Exodus 33, you read all these scriptures, they tell you that when Moses, he saw a bush that was burning, and would not be consumed. Here's what he says. I will turn aside and see this great sight. When God saw that he had turned aside. He said Moses. Take off your shoes for where you stand this holy ground. And a discourse began. And at the end of it God said. Now you are crying for a revelation of me. I am that I am. Know me first before you go and stand before Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh will ask you who sent you. Are we blessed? Listen to me. It is important that we have genuine encounters with God. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Let's hurry up for time. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Repeated also in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8. Isaiah 29 and 13. Any of them, please just give it to us media so that we can make progress. It says, wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do, do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. In other words, they draw near with their mouth, but in, in reality, their hearts are far 
from me. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Oh, once again, dear South Africa, Africa and the globe. Let's reintroduce Jesus. That the foundation of the believer's experience is not miracles. It's not signs. It's not wonders. It's not the prophetic. It's not the apostolic. It's not even revelation. The foundation is Jesus. Hear me. The formula for any life that must excel is that in the beginning, God if it becomes in the beginning fame, in the beginning ministry, in the beginning a desire for signs and wonders, you have corrupted the formula. God cannot be omega until he's allowed to be alpha. Don't allow something else to be alpha and then ask him to come and finish what you started. He only finishes what he started. He is only omega over what he was alpha over please pay attention genuine encounters with god can i tell you this there is a way that when you encounter god you will love him more than preaching you will love him more than business you will love him more than politics genuine encounter with God one of the pillars that can allow men host God at a territorial level genuine encounter many believers today I tell you sincerely many people in church cannot exactly tell if they are saved or not when we started with God in fact we were made to write dates when we gave our lives to Christ. I don't know, is there someone here who remembers? You can't arbitrarily hope you are saved. Wish you were saved. Imagine that you are saved. If you are saved, you are saved. If you are not saved. And there is a spiritual formula. We are not left to guess whether you are saved. No, there is a formula. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 please give us acts chapter 4 and verse 12 neither is there salvation in any other body of christ let's look at this and remind ourselves for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved you cannot say you are saved when you have not encountered Jesus. It's not Jesus and a group of delegates that save you. No. When it has to do with salvation, there are no delegates. It is Jesus or Jesus alone. If you have met and routed through any other person that you gave your life to, according to the authority of scripture, you are not saved. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.